Now to more on the Canadian Parliament shooting. What do we know about the radicalization to the north of us? And did the gunman have any ties to ISIS? Here to weigh in on all of this is our terrorism expert with the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies, David Gardenstein Ross. Thank you so much, David, for being with us this morning. Let me start with that question about ISIS. Do we know at this point, we're hearing unconfirmed reports that he does have ties to ISIS, the suspect. Is that true? And what do you know? It's unclear at this point. ISIS was able to post a photo of him uh, very quickly, uh, which suggests that there may have been some foreknowledge. But overall, uh, other than uh, the fact that ISIS had been calling for uh, the killing of Westerners and that some people have acted upon it, uh, other than the timing of this, uh, there's nothing concrete right now. Yeah, so we don't know if he had gone over to train maybe in Syria and then come back to, uh, to the West using his passport. Uh, yeah, it's it's not clear. I mean, it seems unlikely, uh, given that his passport did get taken away. If he'd gone over to Syria, there's a good chance he would have already been prosecuted. He was considered to be high risk, so that seems unlikely. Okay. Uh, but what kind of ties are there, we, we don't know right now. All right, David, this suspect, a convert to Islam, this is the second attack in three days. What do we know about the radical, radicalization in Canada at this point and how that's going to affect us here in the U.S.? We know that uh, a number of uh, Canadians have uh, gone over to Syria. Uh, the exact figure is, uh, as with the figures in the U.S., a little bit murky. Uh, prior to that, you also had a number of Canadians who uh, went over to uh, Somalia to liaise with the Islamic militant group al-Shabaab, which is an official al-Qaeda affiliate. You've had a few uh, fairly significant uh, terrorist plots in Canada, the most significant of which was called the Toronto 18 plot, uh, a plot involving about 18 people who uh, wanted to attack major Canadian institutions and even behead the prime minister. Uh, as to the impact on the United States, uh, that remains to be seen. One of the U.S.'s big concerns for some time was that Canada has a relatively lax environment, or at least it used to, um, such that uh, people who had affiliations with terrorist groups could operate there. There was some concern about our northern border. Well, wow, that's pretty scary. So their national security is, is not similar to ours? Well, when I, when I spent time in, in Ottawa, one thing that was always striking to me is looking at the contrast between the American embassy and other buildings. Uh, there's usually a contrast in that regard in almost any Western capital you go to, uh, in that the American embassy tends to be one of the most or the most well-protected building. But uh, other than the U.S. embassy, most buildings had very visibly lax security. Uh, their view on terrorism tended to be uh, that it was someone else's problem. Uh, not that the government in Canada is unserious about it, uh, but for groups that operated there, like the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Alam, a group that was focused on Sri Lanka, they tended to use Canada as a hub to raise funds and the like, and they weren't looking to strike at Canada. Mm. Now, this sends a very different signal, and it's going to be, frankly, extraordinarily alarming to the Canadians. Yeah, I'm going to be curious to find out how they handle this. Maybe they will ramp up their security after this. Thanks so much, David, for being with us this morning.